everyone, my name is Olivia. I'm a graduate student at Washington State University and today I'm here to show you this double pipe heat exchanger low cost desktop learning module. We're going to learn about flow patterns in the double pipe heat exchanger. We're going to learn about how heat is transferred through this heat exchanger, take some measurements of temperature and flow rate, and we're going to talk about how flow rate affects the heat transfer rate in the exchanger. If you haven't taken the pre-test on Qualtrics, please follow the link below on your screen and please go do that before you continue watching this video. The first thing I want to do is just talk about the setup here and go through all the different components we have as a part of this double pipe heat exchanger. So we have two inlet beakers for our heat exchanger, one over here that's full of hot water that's colored red and the other over here that's full of cold water and it's colored blue. And so in both of those inlet beakers we have pumps that are connected to the inlets of our heat exchanger. So when we turn on the pumps, water's gonna start flowing through the exchanger and it's gonna flow into these two outlet beakers on the other side. And so our hot water inlet is up here and our cold water inlet is down here. And so when we turn on the pumps, you're gonna see how water flows through this heat exchanger. And as the hot water comes um, in contact with these inner steel pipes um, and the cold water flows over the pipes, heat is going to be transferred from the hot to the cold water as the water flows through the system. So if you're following along with the double pipe heat exchanger worksheet, I'd like you to, on page one, draw the predicted flow patterns and label the hot inlets and outlets on this heat exchanger. So now that you've drawn what you think the flow patterns are gonna look like, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the pumps for this heat exchanger and I want you to watch how both the hot and the cold water travel through the heat exchanger and where they exit into the exit beakers. So you can see that as this is running, the hot water is coming in at the inlet and it's running through these inner tubes um, back and forth to the exit. The cold water is coming in down at the inlet here and it's running in through the outer tubes, across the inner tubes, up to the exit. Here we call this a counter flow double pipe heat exchanger because the fluids are flowing in an opposite direction to each other. The next thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna take some measurements of inlet temperature, flow rate and outlet temperature as water goes through this heat exchanger so that you can calculate the heat transfer rate in the heat exchanger. If you're following along on the worksheet, we're gonna be filling out the table on page two. So we're gonna measure the hot water inlet temperature, the cold water inlet temperature. We're gonna let water flow through the exchanger until the inlet beakers are empty. We're gonna measure the volume in each of the outlet beakers. We're gonna measure the temperature in each of the outlet beakers. And finally, we're gonna time how long water is flowing through the system. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the cold water inlet temperature. I have a thermometer here, it's reading in degrees Celsius. So we're just gonna put this in the beaker, let the temperature come to a steady value. And it looks like our cold water inlet temperature is 13 degrees C. Next, we're gonna measure the hot water inlet temperature. Same thing. Our hot water inlet temperature day is 43.9 degrees Celsius. So now that we have the hot water inlet temperatures, I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. I'm going to turn on the pumps and as soon as water starts uh, filling the outlet beakers, I'm going to turn on my stopwatch and we're going to start timing how long the flowing fluid is coming through the system. Okay, and turning the pumps on in three, two, one, and I'm going to start my stopwatch. So we're just gonna let this flow until the inlet beakers are almost empty and then I'm gonna turn off the pumps and then stop my stopwatch. Turning off the pumps and stopping my timer. So our time for fluid flow was 29.25 seconds. Next, we're gonna measure the outlet temperature of the hot water. like that is 36.3 degrees Celsius. We're going to do the same thing for the cold water. And the cold water outlet is 20.7 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the last thing we're going to measure is the outlet volumes of the hot and the cold water. So for our hot water we have a volume of 625 milliliters. And for our cold water, we have an outlet volume of 560 milliliters. 
And so let's talk a little bit about what happened here. And so when we measured the inlet temperatures, the hot water temperature was high, the cold water temperature was very low. And then when we measured the outlet temperatures of both the hot and the cold water, the temperature of the hot water went down and the temperature of the cold water went up. So that means heat is being transferred from the hot water to the cold water as it flows through the system. So the cold water is getting heated and the hot water is losing energy, so it's being cooled. All right, so the last thing we're going to do today is talk about how flow rate affects the heat transfer rate in a heat exchanger. And so if you remember, the heat transfer rate is the product of the mass flow rate of the fluid times its heat capacity times the temperature difference from the inlet to the outlet. And so, we also know, due to the conservation of energy, that the heat transfer rate of the cold fluid must be equal to the heat transfer rate of the hot fluid, so that energy is conserved in the system. And so we're going to do an experiment now um, where we slow the flow rate of the cold fluid and see how it affects the temperature difference of the hot fluid. So if you're following along with the worksheet, um, this is experiment two on page four of your worksheet. So to do this experiment, we're just gonna measure the inlet temperature of the hot water so that we can see how the total temperature difference of the hot water changes when we change the flow rate of the cold water. And so our hot water inlet temperature for this experiment is 56.6 degrees Celsius. So to start this experiment, I'm just gonna turn the pumps on, let the fluid flow until it starts going into the inlet beakers. I'm gonna hold my thermometer in the hot water exit stream so that we know what temperature the hot water is when it's exiting the heat exchanger. And then once that temperature comes to steady state, I'm going to pinch the inlet tubing of the cold water and that's going to slow down the flow rate of the cold water. And then while the thermometer is still under there, once I pinch the tubing, we should see a temperature change of this hot water um, stream because energy must be conserved. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my pumps. So the temperature of my hot water right now is 45.2 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna start squeezing my cold water and you can see that the flow rate has slowed down. The temperature of my hot water is going up now. And the new steady state hot water temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you can see from this experiment that when I squeeze the cold water inlet tubing, the hot water temperature went from 45 degrees at the exit to 50 degrees at the exit, which means that the total temperature difference of the hot water from the inlet to the exit has decreased. And that's because the heat transfer rate of the hot fluid has to be balanced with the heat transfer rate of the cold fluid. So when we squeeze the inlet tubing of the cold water, the heat transfer rate of the cold fluid decreased. So then in order to account for this, since we're not changing the flow rate of the hot water, we have to, the temperature difference from the inlet to the outlet has to decrease to balance those two heat transfer rates. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the double pipe heat exchanger desktop learning module. I hope you learned a little bit about flow patterns in a counter current heat exchanger, about what happens to the temperatures of hot and cold water as they move through the heat exchanger and how heat is transferred, and about how flow rate affects the heat transfer rate of the hot and cold water. Your instructor is gonna give you uh, directions on how much more of this worksheet you need to complete and how to take the post-test on Qualtrics. Thanks for watching and have a great day.